Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel on this beautiful, rainy, wet, cold Saturday. Anyway, uh, welcome back and um, today I want to talk to you about, um, about what we carry, why we carry it, and what options you have. You know, some people, you know, um, they tend to either undercarry what they need in the outdoors or they overcarry. Um, those who've done it for a while, they have it just really dialed in very well and they know exactly what they need. And, um, yeah, so I'll tell you what I do. First of all, I develop my loadout and it's determined by several things. Number one, activities I'm going to do. And I remember the term terrain dictates. So it depends on where I'm going to do it. And the next thing, which is very important also, is the weather. Okay, what can I expect? If it's a winter time, you're going to need, um, if you're, you know, if you want to carry it, you're going to need a little bit more winter gear. And um, that is, you're going to need to increase uh, um, some of your volume, okay? Of course, we, we really like to be able to go out there with that 30, 30 liter rucksack uh, and uh, go as light as possible. And you have people who really do a lot of lightweight super camping. Matter of fact, I saw a video, I follow a lot of them. And I, I've, there's one guy looking at the other day and he kept complaining about how cold it was. Uh, but he, I saw a few things that he could have done to have made it better and then they were had problems with uh, they were basically they were limited to the type of w trees around the area that they could they could uh, they could take and process because they didn't have a saw on them they didn't have an axe and their knives were, uh, were only these little small little knives um, because they are more worried about the weight than they are about uh, the what ifs uh, the emergency and this kind of stuff they even tend to carry really um, small uh, first aid kits and 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 this kind of stuff you know so th these are all factors involved in this in it you know a lot of people go either that extreme where you're under carrying well that's fine if you carry the right items with you but you know the le the more you the m the less you carry the more you need to have inside your head you know so uh, of course they're carrying a tent which is a nice lightweight thing to have you know but uh, the question is, do they, if they don't carry a tent, can they build a structure? Okay. Or do they have that ability? And uh, does it really matter to them? You know, so, <laughs> I mean, if you're going to go and stay in chalets like we do in Switzerland here, you have these chalets, that kind of stuff, you, you may can go, you can get, a, get away without having a tarp, you know, or a tent or something like that. But if you get into a situation where you need to, uh, you know, you know, a storm hits real quick or something like that, you need to take cover. Uh, it's good to have some kind of a, um, a overhead cover for yourself or the ability to, to build something very quickly. And then it's good to have some tools. Sure, you can get out there toolless and you could come up with something. Uh, but, you know, you know what? It's, it's best to have, like I said, the five basic tools. Now, that goes to the other extreme. You have people, I've seen them, they're packing lists and they've got three and four knives with them, you know? Like, what the hell are you doing? You need three or four knives with. You only have two hands, you know? So, I mean, uh, uh, one good knife is, is enough. Uh, and then um, if you're going to have some more tools with you, get you, you take a saw, the next, and then take an axe. The reason why I do all, I, I put it in that order because you can take a good fixed blade knife with a lump of wood and you can, you can split wood with it, you know? You could even... Uh, you can even, through smaller trees, you can actually cut through it with a knife, you know, uh, or at least enough so you can tear it, tear it down. But I carry a fixed blade knife and then a saw, and then after that, there's an axe. And then, of course, I always have my little Swiss tool with me, so I have some tools on that that I can use. Uh, and then the last thing I carry is, is, a, is a, a crooked blade knife because hmm, I, can, I can work, you know, if I'm out there and I have the time, I'm not training somebody, instru giving instruction, I can just sit, sit back and relax. I can get some, uh, find some, some a nice piece of wood and I can make something with it, you know, I guess make it, you know, whatever, you know, sort of to, you know, to go over the time. It's like, it, it depends. It really depends. Anyway, so that's what I do. Also, another thing, some people, I mean, sure, if you want to carry, you know, 50 pounds of uh, kit on you, you know, um, out there and you have the ability to do that, go for it, you know, but I, I just, I think it goes against what, you know, why you're out there in the first place. I mean, you can go car camping, you know, <laughs> and just set up a, in a nice spot somewhere and just, you know, have your chairs, your table, your big tent, you know, your, you know, your music, all this kind of stuff. When I go out there, I don't want, I, I really, you know, except for, you know, nights to have a place to sit, you know, um, like a stump or something, I prefer just to, uh, to avoid all those other things, you know, so I mean, I can, I can build things if I need it, you know, so, but, um, 
yeah so i think it's something to be aware of and to be wary of you know when you you know so like i said let's let's, let's just say right now the season's now it's winter time i just made a video on this um for my other channel uh but uh it's you know what do i add to or take away you know from my kit first of all like i said i developed my kit and then when I use it, when I get back, I see, was I missing something? Because what I do is I lay my kit out and look at it because I want to clean it. I want to make sure it's all there. I haven't lost something. I haven't broken something. And then I also look, okay, what did I use and what did I not use? And the things that I use, do I use them all the time? And the things that I didn't use, maybe I'll need it for, for the next time, like a first aid kit. Hopefully I don't use a first kit, aid kit while I'm out there. But I still go through my first aid kit uh, before I go on a trip to make sure I have everything in it I need. You know, uh, I make sure that my sleeping mat, I can air it up and that I'll, it'll, it'll hold air You know, before I go out there. Because I have gone out uh, before and the damn um, sleeping, sleeping mat pad uh, had developed a hole in it. You know, and uh, so then I had to repair my sleeping pad. But, uh, and, but I was ready for that. I had a little small kit on me so I could do that, you know. But uh, um, these are the things that I weigh and I look into. Now, like I said, if you go into wintertime, you're going to have to upgrade your sleeping, you know, your sleeping situation. That's, that's a must. You know, people who don't, I think that you're going out there for a different reason. And if you go out there for a different reason, okay, that's fine. You know, if you want to go out there and see if you can survive, do that. I mean, you can definitely do it. There's nothing that says you can't do it. And uh, it's up to you. You know, what, what your pressure, what your, you know, <laughs> your pain pressure is, you know, pain, pain limit is. But um, if you want to go out there and enjoy the outdoors, I suggest you do that. And me nowadays, at my age, and, 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 um, and because I've injured myself a lot, um, my back is not the greatest. My hips aren't the greatest anymore. My knees aren't the, the, the best. So I have to go with lighter weight boots. I have to go with less gear on my back. Um, a couple winters ago, I would, um, would just what I thought I would need. Now, of course, I did. I, I used all the sleeping gear I had, which was good. I, I actually brought my double sleeping bag with me, a nice air mattress, my sleeping mat, and my Tyvex sheeting. That's my basic sleeping. Now, I can do that under a tree. I can do that in a building. I can do it in a garage. I can do it in a tent. I can do it on a tarp. I can do it anywhere. <laughs> but uh, that's my basic sleeping gear because I know I'll be comfortable in that. Okay. If I'm going to be outside under a tree, I might take either my tarp with me I can wrap up in it if I need to, or just build a, a quick lean-to, or I'll bring my sleeping bag, um, my bag, uh, bivy bag with me, and I have a couple of them, actually, a Gore-Tex one, and I have one that's made by Hilleberg, which is, uh, um, which is a really nice one, actually, it's not bad at all, um, and I've used both of them, they both work really well, the Hilleberg one's actually much lighter, um, and takes up a lot less space, but, um, yeah, so, and then, of course, you know, how I want to eat, sometimes I go out there, and if I'm doing, like, several days of hiking, I'll just go light, you know, and carry lightweight uh, hiking food with me. Now, if I'm going out there and I want to enjoy my meal with my friends, you know, we might want to have a fondue or a raclette. We have some sausages with us. You know, might make some steak, some grill, some stuff, whatever. That's open, you know. Might have a nice breakfast with oatmeal or whatever, you know, and, and, you know, some bread with some cheese or whatever, you know. Now, that's going to increase the volume and it's going to increase the weight in your pack. So if you do that for an overnight or a couple overnights, that's fine, but a long, long distance trip, that's, it makes it a lot more difficult, you know, but I do suggest you do augment, uh, even your lightweight meals, throw some chocolate bars in there, um, put some stuff in there that you can, that you can that add to, uh, the flavor, but also add to the calories because, you know, if you eat just three of those, let's say you eat three of those meals in a day, that's only about between 1200 and 1500 calories. And if you're moving, uh, distances in the heat or whatever, or whatever, or even in the winter time, you're, you know, snowshoeing or, or, uh, cross country, well, that, that, that's that rain and, uh, <laughs> that sleet is coming down, but, and then you're going to use a lot more energy. You need more calories. I mean, uh, to get you through a day. I mean, I remember in the army, we were going 5,000 calories was nothing, you know, uh, for a, a, just for a day. Um, when you're in the extreme winter time, because your body is, is, you need that fat, those fats and stuff. So, just be aware of that. Also, clothing, you know, you're going to need to buff up, you know, um, mount up your clothing a little bit more, buff it up a little bit more where you have um, you, you have more insulation, especially if you're in a, uh, around a fire. you got to be careful of that, but also to keep you warm, you know. So I do have some insulated pants I can put on. I have, I can throw on a couple, a vest and another jacket I carry with me usually. I do like to carry a lot of wools with me also, and I do suggest that for the wintertime. But, you know, it really depends. Make sure you, make sure you, you know, you got what you need. 
what uh, trips me out though is to see people cut uh, things out that are important to have for things out that they double. You know, like oh, I carry two uh, uh, wool wool hats with me or two masks with me. Why? Why? One's good enough. They're wool. I mean, uh, um, you take it off, you dry, you know, you put it in your jacket right here. It's in your jacket when you're sleeping at night. You put it because they, they carry one for sleeping in and one for, uh, you know, whatever or being around the fire. I don't know why, but they they tend to do that. You know, uh, yeah. Do do bring some extra socks with you. Do bring uh, some extra underclothing when you sleep in. You know, but uh, um, um, I, I don't think you're going to be warmer by dress by sleeping naked either. And then you, cause you, when you get up at night, you have to take a whiz like I do. You're going to have to, uh, you know. <laughs> You're going to want to put something on, you know. Uh, it's good to have some, some camp shoes with you also, either some sandals or some Crocs or something you can easily sleep your feet in and um, so you don't have to put your boots on. But if you're going strictly, you know, um, strictly as light as possible, but the major things you need, which is usually what I do, um, you will even leave some of those comfort items out of it. But anyway, just a quick video on that. Um, be aware of what you need. Don't forget those 10 essentials and don't forget the things that are important, but do not, you don't need to over, you know, um, overpack, you know, you don't need to do that. If you're going out there and you're carrying, you know, 50, 60, 40, 50, 60 liters, uh, kilo, uh, pounds of, of kit, you know, I think it's, I think it's just way too much. I mean, I can understand 30, you know, 30 pounds of kit, you know, 15 kilos, you know, something like that in the wintertime, you know, you got your a much better sleep bag with you and, and uh, uh, you got a few extra warm stuff and you've upped a bit your calories. I can understand that, but uh, just be aware, you know, but also another thing is that do not use a backpack um, that's not really, doesn't have the suspension system in it to support that kind of weight. Uh, because it's going, it can either it can hurt you. You know, you're going to be sore. Uh, it's not comfortable, and it's going to put you off. You know, get yourself. You know, I care. Like I said, in the summertime, I have a nice 30 liter backpack, and I use that for almost everything. But if I'm going to do any kind of camping out for more than uh, a couple of days, I'm going to carry my larger 60 liter uh, rucksack uh, that can carry everything in. And I've, I've, you know, I've done many days with that, you know, uh, and, and it works fine. You know, the only problem is, like I said, you know, you're going to have to have sources of water because it's not easy. Um, and this all depends on where you're at too. Like I'm in Switzerland. Okay. Now when I was in Louisiana, the biggest problem down there is not the freezing weather, but it's damn bugs and stuff. So, and of course you have flash flood rains that come on. But, uh, when you go down to the lake, do some camping, that kind of stuff, you didn't, we didn't need that much stuff, you know, but uh, also back then we didn't have rations. We basically just had to bring the food with us and, uh, you know, and two guys grab a cooler and you got your cooler with all your extra stuff in it. And you sort of hike with that, you know, uh, but, um, and you didn't go on these big long hikes either. You just, you probably go to a specific spot. There you set up camp and you do some day hiking out. That's actually what I like to do a lot. Also, uh, more than just, uh, you know, just, uh, a week long hike, you know, I, I don't mind that. It's just that uh, I'd like to cut out as much weight every day, pounding on my knees as much as I can. I did a couple of days hike one time. Um, and it was probably the worst, um, example I've ever had in my life. And I, like I said, I did 10, 10 years in the army where we would go somewhere and we were out moving around nonstop day, night, um, for days and weeks on the, on end, you know, so, and you carrying heavy weights on you. Um, but, um, on a, uh, I went to Snowden one time with a group of friends. It was on my birthday, actually, because we had, when we got to the top of Snowden, they all pulled out uh, <laughs> birthday gifts for me. But, um, yeah, we did that. And what I did is bec we, I hiked up one route, and then we got about two, I got about two thirds up. And then one of the guys with me uh, was having problems with the, with the vertigo. And so we came back down, he and I did. Uh, and we were a big group. And then he and I went up another route called the pig trail. And that was like, uh, phew, that was the worst trail I've ever been on in my life because it was man-made. It was basically like a stairwells all the way up, but really high. I mean, they're over one foot each step was, it was so bad. Um, and by the time I got up there, my knees were, were really, really hurting, uh, because even my, the boots I were wearing were a little bit more uh, weight than I needed over 500 grams each. So that's like, you know, it's a pound each. So now I've cut that out. You know, I've cut out all that weight on my feet. Um, I go with the lightest pair of shoes possible. I still need to protect my ankles because they're pretty messed up. But, you know, these are things you got to be aware of. You got to be careful of, you know. And remember, you know, and it's something for kids too, and especially for children. Is that when scouting, we had a rule that no more than 10 to 12% of your body weight. 
Um, and this can go for adults too, okay? Um, the kids, especially for children uh, and for young kids who aren't developed yet, but for adults also, you need to be careful carrying a lot of weight. I mean, uh, um, um, unless you've built up to where you can carry a lot of weight, try to go as light as possible. Think out what you're doing, weigh your stuff, you know, be a little bit fanatic about it. I, I am that way now. I really, I'm really careful for how much I care because I want to enjoy myself when I'm out there. I'm not out there on a freaking death march. And, uh, hopefully those days are completely finished for me. But anyway, um, I want to thank you. I hope this helped you a little bit. Uh, and if you have any questions, please leave them down below. If I missed out on anything, please uh, leave it in the comments. Also, please, uh, like share and, uh, um, and, um, um, subscribe to my channel. And I look forward to hearing from you. Listen, I want to thank you again and hope you guys all have a good day. Goodbye.